I have a problem on my hands. I don't know if his feelings are hurt. Sometimes it's hard to tell whether he's super sensitive or he doesn't have feelings at all because he's a mask wearing corporate soldier and you can hear him every day on nothing personal. I think that he is here, I am not sure. I think he's here early because he's about to do a segment with Adnan, uh, a movie segment, but I think he's hurt by us doing a Marlins watch party. Uh, it was a lot of fun, it seems like. Uh, Tony, it, it was produced by the crew, and it felt like a, a party uh, at a game. A lot of people who were watching uh, probably weren't interested in Marlins Phillies, but they felt like a little bit of the show was, uh, was doing show in the sky. It was all of us kind of watching the game like if we were at the house with each other, just poking fun, making jokes, reading the chat, doing stuff like that. And, uh, yeah, it was, it was a cool hangout. That's what people do when they hang out at the house. They check the chat. Who produced it? Who was it produced Our by? Our boy TD, Thomas Darrow. Okay, but, uh, okay, so who got guests, though? Like, who was invited? Because evidently you guys had a cool party that David Sampson was not invited to. That's what happened last night on at Metal Arc Media, correct? I think this is us thinking that he would have, this was too small for David Sampson. We would think David Sampson... We would, it would need to be a better event for us to why think that you, he would, would want to be invited. If I may, why would you force David Sampson onto a, a pro Marlins, Billy led uh, Marlins watch party? Uh, who's forcing? I didn't force anybody. I told. I asked Bill. No, no, no. I'm, I'm, I'm just posing the question out there. It's not. It just doesn't mesh. I he mean, he is a baseball expert. Yeah, but it, it, that's a, that's a Marlins fan watch party, and just to inject david sampson into it because he's associated with our show kind of runs contrast to the general vibe of like we wouldn't fans invite fans being fans we wouldn't invite cam cameron to a dolphins watch what party oh, yeah wow. what you're doing right now is like when my dad finds out that i go out one night and, and have fun with my friends and he's like well why didn't i get invited and i just have to tell him because i didn't want you there Whoa, why, 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 I, nobody said that. Why that would I? Mike, why Mike would said. I invite you? It was just like you know, it was I, just me and my friends. I, I don't think want my just, dad there. But also, if your dad like swindled them out of money in some way too, yeah, that aspect. Uh, so where are you with this, Samson? Hold on, because Tony was a part of the proceedings. Please, no, it, it's, I it have had, uh, look, Tony. I'm going to need your help. Okay, you know that Chris Cody's a glue guy. He's a part of Metal Arc Media now, and it is an awkward fit for a lot of different reasons. But there was a bit of a company party last night, and David Sampson was not invited. I didn't tell anybody. You were attempting to, to put a guilt trip on the people, and we're not going to take I'm it. I'm not guilt tripping you. No, I think th that's this why. This entire segment has been one big guilt trip. Sampson, is this why you're here early? I'm putting that all as context for you guys on why. I don't know why Sampson appeared early, but it seems to me like he's hurt by that. An employee of Metal Ark, somebody who works within you're the- You're describing a guilt trip. I, what do you want me to I tell you? I just don't understand why you would not take advantage of having someone at the party. I actually watched it and it was great fun and I felt like a total outsider, but I tried to inject myself in the chat and you guys would recognize all these people in the chat and all these people giving donations. And I wanted you to see that I was there to say, hey, knock, knock, if you want me to join or want to engage, I'm happy to do it because I love engaging with stuff that Metal Art does, the stuff that you do, because it's good for the company. And what you guys don't get is that the Marlin stuff is ancient history. And if we're trying to build our audience and grow this business, there's a whole lot of people out there who don't give a what I did as president of the Marlins. They know me as part of Metal Arc now, but you refuse to acknowledge that. And someone reached out to me and I took the number one DM of the scores that I got wondering why I was not a part of it. And uh, it's pretty clear that you guys missed this time. We have one person to blame back here. We've been doing a little powwow of the people that were there and we've figured out who it was, it's Billy. It's always a Bill it's always a weird look when someone's like that party you guys had last night would have been so much better if I was there and I was watching from behind a curtain. I I'm happy to admit it. You guys can make fun of it all you want. I'm totally fine with that actually, but you don't understand. My interest is in growing the company and growing the audience. And if there's a way that you can get value added, just because I've been there, I've been a part of that franchise. We could talk about things, and there are people who hang out with me who actually have fun. But this was a pretty personal, look at how long 
that DM Well, is. no, wait. Let's read it. Let's read it. Speak on behalf of this. Uh, you're saying the party would have been better last night. He, look, he's claiming. He's claiming. Uh, uh, Chris, Jessica, do you feel awkwardly now? Very because, uncomfortable right now. Uh, okay, good. Good. No. I, feel, I feel bad no. about Dan. If I didn't see David in the chat, if I would have seen David in the chat, I would have invited him again. No. Not my party. This is, this is, so let me. Explain. I did it multiple times because on the thought that maybe you didn't see it the first time. Oh, that's sad. I entered the chat multiple times. Billy kept Samson out of the cool party. And what Samson is saying is that's not cool Metal Arc Union spirit. One, two, three, Brent. He's saying that's not teamwork. That you've got a professional. You've got a guy who, yes, he's got a resume and a past that would not want to be near Marlins fan Billy, who loves this team, and Samson did stuff to this team that took Billy's money. Took Billy's but money. But the audience doesn't care. They want to be entertained. The fact that Billy can't get over it or Mike can't get over it and what they, they sit around whining all the time – that's not exciting or good content. When you have the opportunity to do better, you should. And if you listen to what your listeners and viewers are actually saying, I think you may appreciate it a little better. All right. And so we will get to the sound in just a second. Marlins are going to come back right now. One, okay. two, three, Brett. One, two, three, Brett. <laughs> don't whine about it. <laughs> I don't. I, I genuinely don't care. I don't. I, the only time I talk Marlins is through this prism, and I'm annoyed by it. All right, we'll read this in a second, though. We will, because I want to know what it is that he's saying, and I want you all to sink into the awkward awkwardness of this, because David Sampson is being paid a lot at CBS for his baseball expertise this month. You had in the comments section someone desperate to spice up the proceedings with some good baseball talk, and he was not invited. He was locked out. He didn't have the corporate key to the party. So read this. Go ahead and read this uh, DM, please. You know, I have to share this, and they call it what they will, but I turned into the YouTube Marlins watch party done by the Levitard producers, and Chris Cody and Billy, whatever his last name is, are downright scumbags and pieces of towards you for no reason. The second the Grand Slam is hit by Philly, Billy says, so David Sampson built a stadium on Native American ruins? Huh? What a guy. And then Chris strolls into the stream and goes, quote, you know when you meet someone and they give off the shady guy vibe? That's David Sampson. Everyone was silent and moved on to, complete, to complaining about you in other ways. I've been a listening fan for 12 years of the Lebo show. The show somehow decided when their topics don't suit them or something isn't going their way, they just shit on you for no reason. Dan does it with Mike's quote fandom and how you killed it. Get the fuck over it, Mike. And Dan, come up with a new take, something original and not recycled from 2009. I just feel bad for you, man. You do your best for that show, and Dan and they give you nothing in return. You should go on and do a full lawyer talk and drop the corporate hammer on Chris and Billy and threaten to sue them Cameron. for damages, harassment, libel, slander, all of it. Scare the out of them because they know they don't hold a candle to your intelligence and life experience they straight up suck ass and to top it all off jessica targets you to be rude and talk about you do the same thing to her i say and show her you know more about unions in your one pinky than she does in her whole 26 years of living <laughs> wow. Roy's cool. Uh, they were, Roy's, Roy's fine. I got Wait, no what color was that text? Is it green? <laughs> I got no problem with Tony or that no talent Fuente. Phew. What happened? That was quite something. Wait, what happened? Because they're accusing you here. They don't want to say it to your face. I'll uh, say it to his face. David, you wrote that. <laughs> I swear to God. Okay. 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 I, I will prove it right now. I'm right now, you, live on the air. This is going to Discovery. Yeah. You wrote that Lot message. Do not do this. Also, you are making a you mistake. Didn't I don't deny need the Native to be American here. Grounds. Let me be very <laughs> clear about something. I don't need to be here. I do it because I love Dan and I have respect for what you guys are doing. I don't need it. You think I'm going to make that up 
and take extra time out of my day prior to an ad end segment that people sh on because they don't respect the movie part? Okay. Yes. Here I go. <laughs> Hold on, I need my glasses. You're going you're gonna to prove this <laughs> with a lawyerly flourish, but first you have to get your reading glasses because <laughs> you can't do the dismount. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, they didn't want you there. That's it. <laughs> they, they did not want you there. How many of those could you read? How many people are on your side? How many, how many hundreds or thousands of people? Uh, because there were a lot of people watching, David, and you wanted to be a part of it. How many people have reached out to you and said, we, we treated you unfairly last night? To be fair, David, the idea of watching Billy Gill watch a baseball game for Levitard and DraftKings is probably the last thing on earth I wish to do. The most disingenuous person on the show is asking for fucking favors now. Give me a break. Boom, there's one. I could keep going, but we're out of time. We are out of time. All right, we're out of time for this segment. Uh, Jessica, last words. I don't like that everyone here threw Billy Gill under the bus. <laughs> yeah, that was bad. But where is he? You guys, Chris was hiding under a table. You're all cowards. Happy to welcome Amin back in here. We missed him. David Sampson uh, remains here, and Adnan Verk joins us during a very busy time. And I feel, in some respects, like I'm wasting the time of these people talking about the movies because their expertise this time of year is actually valued by networks, more prestigious than Metal Ark. Uh, where their analysis is very strong and they're watching these games that are a lot of fun and we're not covering it because we have to wish a happy 55th birthday to Julia Roberts. Happy birthday to her. I don't care. Good luck. And do top five lists hacky like that because it's her birthday on Julia Roberts' top five movies. So we're wasting their expertise to talk about movies, all of which are going to be... 20 years ago. Ouch. At best. <laughs> At best. You say, I mean, Not about what does it. Thanks a lot, guys. Appreciate it. Well, I let should I talk baseball, Mike? Because I genuinely I I Yeah, preview today's games. I want why, no, I don't want to do you that. talk baseball with me. You had an opportunity to do it for three hours straight yesterday Whoa. and didn't want to do it. We could have had Adnan Jeez, come in. Enough. Adnan, All sorry you couldn't make it last night. Just enough. didn't talk David. baseball, though. That David, was the you're, problem. You're more emo than Jimmy Butler at this point. Just relax. I'll give you guys uh, – you have the floor. Preview all of today's exciting games. I'm still reeling from Jose Barrios being given the hook after 47 pitches. What the hell has gone wrong with the world? Whatever you want Ad, to talk about. Adam, there about. are no games today. That was a setup. <laughs> that was a joke. We were supposed to stay silent. There okay. is no preview of today's games. He can set just, us can, up to look can, bad. Can I just discuss Vlad Jr. getting picked off in a game down to nothing? What's he How doing? the hell does it happen? What's he doing? Runner, Dan, a there's disgra a, a disgrace, disgrace to his father. A disgrace. A disgrace. <laughs> Thank you. That's what we need to discuss. There's a runner on third. Where are you going? Take your lead. Take a big secondary lead. How do you get picked off in a two-run deficit with Boba shut up? We could have talked during the party about John Birdie and what happened with him with the rise on deck, but God forbid we add any value to the Marlins watch party. I would love for you guys to geek out right now for two minutes. It's your one connection point. You guys talking about yeah. baseball? I don't think you two can geek out no, on anything like that. If we give them two minutes, about movies? we're not going to get the Julia Roberts top fives. So. Why not? Well, they're walking into, real all, catch they're walking into all this awkwardness, though, where it, David's got his feelings still hurt, and... And Adnan wasn't invited last night either. Mm -hmm. Oh, he was invited? Oh, <laughs> oh no. This is awkward. You may Are you awkward. kidding me? You cannot be serious, oh, Adnan. Just... You're telling me you were invited and you didn't show up? David, I'd like to point out, as Dan said, I, I do have a network job. I mean, there is MLB oh, network. I, I was on national television with Harold Reynolds and Yankee hitting coach Sean Casey. Sorry I didn't make time for you. I mean, I'm just, just making it clear. I'm not just sitting on the couch. You were on for three straight hours? Uh, yeah, uh, we, we post. Yeah, thanks for watching. I appreciate that. We that's were pretty amazing. <laughs> Not one break, just straight no. through. No, we were locked in. Sonny Gray right after the game spoke to us first. <laughs> can't, can't, can't tape those interviews. Sonny Gray is available right now. We're going to interview him after the game. It's great. 
Did he did he confirm that he touched his hat and A Rod nailed his analysis for ESPN? <laughs> it was the hat touch and what a brilliant move to show Correa. And I tried to explain to the audience this morning, it's actually the space play. If you are between the runner and the base, there's gonna be a pickoff and the catcher has the signal to show the pitcher, hey, the guy on second sleeping, that's the pickoff. Sonny Gray scratching his dandruff. Sorry, A Rod, not the case. <laughs> that was Sonny the- Gray said it was all Correa. He said he knew early on they had a play, went to Pitchcom, et cetera. But go ahead. I like I like the lambasting of A-Rod, no, Dan. No, yeah, no, A-Rod went viral with a cue that baseball people knew was dumb, and that's the analysis. <laughs> that's that's what happened. Like, look, A-Rod's giving you expertise that all baseball people know is incredibly wrong, <laughs> but this is how you climb in the industry. A bad, dumb analysis with a big smile and a lot of fame and And team. time. Oh. Two minutes are up. <laughs> Julia right. Roberts, top five. Let's go. All right. Uh, number five, David. Are there any <laughs> OLIs here? Steel Magnolias. <laughs> <laughs> Steel Magnolias is one of my top five all-time emotional <laughs> crying movies. It is Julia Roberts. It's about life. It's about death. And if you get through it without crying, then I don't know who What's you are. What's the problem, Adnan? Why do you have a problem I, with this already? D- Dan, the reason you're crying is you can't handle the stultifying boredom of this movie in 2023. That's why you're crying. You're crying to be put out of your misery. That's where the tears are coming from. Not another maudlin, overly sentimental story about dying and women and just uh, it's 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 a tough watch. I would it was a tough watch in 1990. To it's a tougher watch now, know. David. Maudlin. You're going to say steel mag. And now you're going to tell me terms of endearment is maudlin. No, uh, that's what I'm saying. Terms of endearment actually is what Steel Magnolia's wishes it could be. That's what it aspired to be. It's a poor imitation of it. This is what Number we've four. become. <laughs> we've, we've become this show. I wanted to do baseball and you ran me off of that. Yeah, you just two me... guys arguing yes, whether or not Steel cor- Magnolia's yes, is maudlin. Yes, that's who we in, are in right now. In 2023. That is correct. That, with that show. Well, you, what did we do before? We sunk into the awkwardness of, 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 of Samson wanting in on a party last night that now Adnan was invited to. Number five. We're running out of time. Number four. And, and Magnolia's was so great. I am actually not going to give you number four because I'm going to use my number four time to ask a question of Chris Cody very simply. How is it that you thought Adnan would bring more value in not even showing up than in actually asking me to join when I was available? (laughs) She was great in that. (laughs) What's the question? You just keep going. Give me the you list. Move the mic away. Number three. Ocean's Eleven. Oh, Come on. That's a terrible pick. I mean, jump all over. What the hell are we doing right now? And that's not a Julia Roberts movie. That's a slick, overly produced movie with a bunch of handsome dudes imitating the Rat Pack for a different generation. That's not a Julia Roberts movie. Come Ad, on. And then I'm just waiting to see where Valentine's Day lands on his list. <laughs> Number two. <laughs> it ain't a Julia Roberts movie. Like, come on, David. I mean, that's ridiculous. It's your classic ensemble. <laughs> I'm going to tell you why Ocean's Eleven is my number three. Because I watched it during that 48-hour challenge last weekend. And for whatever reason, it, it hit me really well. Because I was tired and grumpy and hurting. And I said, wow, this is a really good movie. And I was looking at Julia Roberts thinking she was a huge part of it. So then it was her 55th birthday, and that's how it made the list. Number two, my best friend's wedding. Hell yeah. Cameron Diaz, Dermot Mulroney, and Julia Roberts. This is my dream where you're always the friend and you want to be the lover so badly and you come this close and then you have to seed at the end realizing that you're stuck in the ducky zone, which is a zone that I've been in for most of my life. So that movie definitely uh, does something for me. Hell yeah. I, I guess we have different dreams, bud. That's, that's just not my dream. <laughs> <laughs> she should have said something on the boat. She had yeah, him. She should have. Mike I've Ryan, actually said no, things see, Mike Ryan, no, Samson, look, Mike Ryan does not want the unpopularity that comes with siding with you, but he mouthed. I saw him. He wouldn't do it on Mike. Fire when you said that. <laughs> Fire that movie. The movie's great. Rupert Everett yeah. was magnificent. Rupert Everett has a very scene. He just, oh my Everett. gosh, scene stealing Rupert Everett. Yeah.
<laughs> the closing credits to my best friend's wedding when they're dancing and when they're on the phone and all of a sudden they realize they're in the same place because he came to the wedding is one of the great endings of a romantic comedy there is, which is why it deserves to be number two. But all of them pale to number one. The Pretty number woman. one Julia Roberts movie of all time. Pretty woman. What? <laughs> <laughs> it's got to be Pretty Woman. I mean, Great this choice, list is only, Good this job, is the only thing that can save this list is Pretty Woman. Great this job, is the only Ant thing Man. that can save this list. Really? The number one Julia Roberts movie of all time is Notting Hill. <laughs> <laughs> I've watched Notting Hill maybe a hundred times, maybe more. I own it. I have it on every device. And I've been um, to Notting Hill. You can look at me, Louis, all you want, where I hang out in front of the blue door. I go down the, the, the fair and I try oh. to see, will love find me? How great would that be? Trying to run into people and spill coffee, take pictures. And that movie, when she presents him with the Chagall. This is the stupidest realizes, list ever. Are you joking? David, you're gonna sell Notting Hill as five ever. number one. <laughs> Some notable- <laughs> He is offended. He at, at his core, what has happened here is, the cinematic soul of Adnan Virk has so offended that you have now tickled him, and all he can do is broadcast giggle laugh at your face because <laughs> he is deeply wounded by how bad a choice this is. Please explain to the audience, broadcaster man, why it is this pick is so bad. Notting Hill, damn, this is this is laughable. Like, you know, Julia Roberts is an iconic actress. You know, wherever she goes, you're going to hear Roy Orbis in the streets. Pretty Woman has got to be number one. And you're going to tell me Notting Hill? More like Rotting Hill. David, oh, that's like, oh, bars. Oh, like a movie bars. where George Costanza oh, physically abuses a streetwalker. How about that? More right. like Rotting. And then, un unfortunately, we've devoted far too much time to Samson, so you're going to have to go through your list rapid fire. No problem, Mike. Uh, I don't know how we can get over the low of Notting Hill, but number five is August Osage County. You're so stuffy. N number four is Closer. Number three, where are my Denzel fans at? Pelican Brief. Thank Let's you. go. <laughs> On my list. The one I've seen. Number two, won an Academy Award, Aaron Brockovich. Fantastic. On my list. And number one, dun, 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 Pretty woman. Richard Gere. Let's go. Look at that. Speeding through that list. No stepmom. No love for Charlie Wilson's war? I do like Philip Shira. I figured you guys would have that in your Sleeping with the enemy was, that's another good one. Conspiracy theory? You're never going to be jello. They would have been so good on baseball. <laughs> I'm happy to come back anytime you want. To no, talk thanks. Baseball during the month of <laughs> We're <Monday>. good. <laughs>
the, the spread is such. You're that a coward suggests... on the front end of these. That's one way to pose you, it. You you take the big favorite. Okay. And you want me to get brave? Get okay, brave. Justin I'll get Fields brave. will show up tonight. Yeah, brave. I mean, that's <laughs> that's been dicey <laughs> as of late. But we're gonna take Bears over 19 and a half total points. So we have Washington Commanders at one point on one end of the parlay. We think the Bears are gonna be competitive and score over 19 and a half points. Jessica hates this bet. I love this bet. Jessica, you I saw your face. You don't trust the Bears to score 10 points. You would bet t- under 10 you points. You could have ended the sentence at Bears. And we're closing out the parlay with Cole Komet over 25 yards. Oh. That's a fart bet. It's a fart bet. That's a fart bet. It's a fart bet on a fart game. Like, what kind of bet is that? Fet. And not part of Thursday Thunder? Cole Komet's going to score a touchdown today. Oh and you're going to thank me. This guy. I'm going to thank you're you. You're going to thank me. Oh, I- You've done the, the last Thursday night game. You won a four leg parlay, did you not? Yeah, I think so. We've been, we've done well this football season on Thursday Thunder. Uh, okay, enough with that segment. I want to get back to something. I mean, you're walking into some awkwardness here. I will tell you that I had a giant smile on my face. Those have been hard to come by recently um, because of some of what I've got going on in my life. But when I look. At the screen, when Dave Sampson is indignant, indignant that he was not invited to something he feels like was a company party, Chris Cody retreated in shame from things he said on that broadcast about David Sampson. And I was hoping that video caught both Jessica's reaction to all of this and Chris's. I didn't feel like I was that embarrassed. Okay, let's look at the video here real quick. I'd like video to just put up on the screen. I've (laughs) okay. Maybe I was a little embarrassed. Oh my god! (laughs) He was terrified. I don't know if they have Jessica. Jessica's was funnier to me because she wasn't afraid. She was like, "Yeah, you weren't invited. You don't know why." Nope, just a bunch of me. That's all we got. (laughs) We uh, look at this. You were not proud there. No, you were ashamed and you felt genuinely. You don't like to hurt people's feelings, so you got it's. But I love a good joke. Oh, so Dan. Look at Dan. Tickled. <laughs> uh, well, yes, I was laughing at I was laughing at how Chris was mortified. Look how you're looking at me. Can we go back to Dan? Yes, that was adorable. of course. Mortified. Aww, look at that. <laughs> no, that's love. love you love your me. Eyes, Dano. You're like, that's my guy. <laughs> <laughs> what a good boy. Do this we, <laughs> might replace the Chris Cody being Italian meme. <laughs> <laughs> Do we have Jessica? Do we have any video? Because Jessica, you were delighted. You wanted to explain to David why he wasn't invited. It seemed like from where I was sitting. I, you know what? I feel like it's a little self-explanatory to not put David on a stream that's for Marlins fans, but maybe I'm wrong. I, I have less experience in all things than David has in his pinky finger, and also yeah. I'm still 26. I don't know if you missed that. Oh, so man. who's to say, Dan? I've never been more confused at this show, at Dan being confused as to why Samson joining that particular watch party would have landed on the they wrong side. They can do side. it the next time the Marlins make it to the postseason, uh, all right? Uh, History is. says it'll or they, be how soon. About, how about a, have a watch party the next time the franchise decides to betray the fans, and he's a perfect fit. I mean – Company and office dynamics uh-huh. that can be awkward. You have uh, worked in professional sports. Corporate David wants to be invited to things where he can prove to be an expert because he does have expertise in baseball. CBS is paying him a lot of money to analyze these games that people do care about. Mm-hmm. And he wanted to come on and make content with the crew. And they're like, no, nope, this isn't the kind of party we want you at. I would say that that's some corporate dysfunction when you have somebody trying to be a part of our crew and doing a podcast for the network, and he can't come to the company parties. Yeah, I mean, the weirdest thing was they invited me to be on it. <laughs> that This is awkward now. I, and I was like, I don't, I mean, I'll try, but I was too busy doing other things. You know nothing about baseball. I've been trying to convince you all season that the Rays are worth watching. Well, yeah, and a good deal that did. I'm glad I didn't waste any time doing that. Mm-hmm. Would have ended the same way. Is that your thing, like texting back sub- basketball people about the Rays? I was trying to convince. Amin did not believe that I cared about that baseball team, that the expertise they were playing with was something that was sculpted and worth watching. I mean, you're gambling. What are we talking about? Stan Van Gundy's (laughs) been begging Dan to stop texting him for months. That's right. I'm polluting. I was trying to become, uh, with the last part of my career, 
the national Rays correspondent. I failed, and their run didn't go far enough. I would have been doing interviews on radio all over the land as a Rays expert this month because I cared about sports again. You've been first talking time. about Yandy Diaz? Yes, all of them. Yes, but Primo then, Mio, by the way. That, 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 see, <laughs> of course he is. Of course. You didn't watch that team either. No, but I know Yandy. Yandy's my boy. Why couldn't we get you into baseball? Why couldn't anybody No, get I was you? in. I was in, man. We went to a game. Uh, I don't remember what game Tony, it was. Tony, you bragged Astros. yesterday how you, went, Astros, you right. went to games that, and then you didn't watch them. Correct. And last night in the eighth <laughs> inning, you were like, I haven't even watched this game. <laughs> I was watching, though, Dan. You Very were at the party. You were at the party. Call of Duty with Lewis. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Tony, you, <laughs> Tony, you were totally relaxed about you didn't give me an awkward face of any kind, and neither did Roy. Roy, did you feel some awkwardness with, with Samson? Because Jessica's face and Chris Cody's face were laugh out loud funny. I did, and it was hysterical. <laughs> For me, it's like lo siento, but. You know? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah that Jessica was not hurt. She was not sad. She's like, how do you not understand? Yeah. <laughs> how do you not understand why you wouldn't be She's invited? like, have you met yourself? <laughs> Look at her face. <laughs> <laughs> it's like somebody <laughs> farted. <laughs> She's so sick. What is that smell? And Chris is the one who did it. <laughs> I would say caption that. I would say caption that. Have you not met yourself would win a caption content. That is the face that she's giving. Hey, Jessica, why wasn't David Sampson invited to the fun party? Have you not met yourself? <laughs> she's, she looks like she smelled a fart that Chris just dealt. <laughs> Look at that. This is Chris's. Yeah. That's a guilty. But Tony and Roy, totally calm. You guys didn't feel any awkwardness. You were just playing video games well, the whole time? I'm the one that made the Adnan like, comment to yeah. him. Like I felt like that's what really got him. When I told him Adnan was invited, he was just like, wait, seriously? Yeah, that was it. Amin was invited. I mean, he does. He was asking us earlier this year, like very basic things about baseball. I was like, "Yeah, so Scott Brocious is still around." Ah! <laughs> Same note, too, bro. What I feel is that, like, I want David to be a part of it. But here's the thing: the the game, we weren't really analyzing it. We were analyzing everything but it. So it feels like David would have been like, "Come on, guys, let's talk baseball," and we'd have been like, "Eh." I feel like we're it good. is weird because Mike Hill was there. Yeah. That's that's funny for to a few people. <laughs> I got it. I got that reference. <laughs> Which two people? It's no, but it is. Uh, that's like there's something to it. It's like it's not a baseball watch along. It's a baseball watch party, and it's like, do you want Samson to come to your party? I think it was a friends hang. Yeah. Keyword. Friends hang. I I think for every <laughs> for every message to David telling him that he should feel bad and slighted. There also would have been 10 messages like, why did you have David on the stream? Like, yeah. this is for Marlins fans. Yeah. 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 So you got to balance that but out. But Tony yeah. navigated the whole thing. I'm, I think I'm ready to declare this. It took him a while to earn it, but you guys tell me if you're willing to sign off on this. I, I, I've been reluctant to give it. I believe Tony might be a glue guy. That he gets along with everybody a little bit. He's not going to have any of these awkwardnesses. No, he's not going to have. He's going to. He's going to be supportive of everyone in the group. And he he's definitely cowered away. Like as soon as we went off air, he was like, "David, I swear, I didn't know you wanted to get in. No, I would have let you in. No, it's not cowering. It's being honest with my guy. David's my guy. And if I would have seen him in the chat, I was reading the chat. I was telling people I could beat him one on one because that's a lot of the things that they like to tell me. I would have seen David, and I would have told him I could beat him one on one. You could have gotten him into the club. You could have. You would have ruined the party. Yeah, but. When you have the cred of like, no, this is my guy. You're good. Then would it that have gone over? How does that all go over? Billy's not here today. All we have is his crestfallen video, seeing the grand slam of his season end. Please put that up again at some point. Just to delight me at some point during the segment by just Billy's reaction, isolated to uh, to seeing his season ended. But you don't think that he would have enjoyed that with David Sampson? I that think so. That moment. I think so because he would have seen David and been like, you know what? I can do something with this. I do think he would have been the least excited of the group. What, wasn't he hosting? Billy. Wasn't he hosting? Right. Or? That's why it made sense to Mike's point. It kind of made sense that Samson was left to, out. To bring, to bring him to Billy's worst. Look, look at, at look This at is the, what Billy would have done if, if Samson showed the up. The whole time. Look at the face here. This is Billy enraged with all of his repressed Marlins rage, and it's inflating his face. Because this team has... And he said the F word. That's, no, that's what I was about to say. Dan, that's the F word right in the... Hanger in the exit bay, Early ready, stages. ready for takeoff. As soon as those doors, right there, open. he's. It was a long F too. It was like, to the moon. <laughs>